I, I haven't had any pats on the back for being a water activist, that's for sure. I mean, I'm originally, as you know, from UK, from Wales, and um, so I could see when I arrived here that there were, there were differences in South Africa that I wasn't really that aware of until I got here, apartheid being one of them. The Vice Chancellor of the time gave me the land to set up a fish farm in this city which had no water. But that was a challenge. I wanted to, to do aquaculture, of which fish farming is a part. I never expected to do it in a town, basically, that has very limited water. And the water we now have um, is not suitable for drinking. And it's certainly not suitable for my fish. On October the 30th, 2006, 38,000 of my trout died in here when a very small proportion, I'm talking less than 1% of the municipal water, was added <clears throat> that night to top up the systems in the hatchery. I realized that the, there were poisons in that water. And I, I approached the new vice chancellor at the time, Dr. Salim Badat, and I said, that I'm not allowing my family to drink this water. At the end of four days, our university lab said that actually, although the water, when they tested it, looked like it wasn't good for fish, they reckoned it was still safe for human consumption. But I continued to get more and more second and third and fourth opinions. The report that I got back from Poltec, which was the laboratory Centrotec used, an accredited laboratory regarding the water, and that was quite a number of tests, was even more damning. It just basically stated in its conclusion that the water in Gramstown was unsafe for human consumption. So I think these poor fish have shown quite a lot to us. And then afterwards, the chemical analyses since then have backed up what we've been saying all along, that we have a, a real problem here. And what I found personally is that the, the aluminum in particular, which they're very sensitive to it, 30 micrograms per litre, um, is a threat to them. To, to us, the lower limit is 300 micrograms per litre, and the upper limit is 500 micrograms per litre. We've measured 1,300 times higher than the 500 milligrams per litre maximum allowed by law. Where I get sleepless nights is not just because of my fish suffering, it's that the long-term effects on human health could, could really be disastrous. And if I think that I, I haven't pushed hard enough in that regard, that's quite a cross to have to bear. Several epidemiological studies have provided evidence with respect to a possible link between aluminium in drinking water and dementia. Recently, the case has been made that the evidence is strong enough to indicate that a major reduction in aluminium exposure would significantly reduce the prevalences of that's AD, which is Alzheimer's disease, and that public policy measures to achieve this end, including guidelines and standards for the re reduction of aluminium drinking water, should be undertaken. And if we assume that it does, there is a link between penile, senile dementia and Alzheimer's disease, then perhaps the aluminium in the environment here, where it's so rich, in this part of the Eastern Cape, could impact on people's mental health and may have been do doing so for 200 years. There are five psychiatric, psychiatric hospitals in Cape Town, and there are five in this part of the Eastern Cape. That's 10. So for probably 15% of the population, we've got just under half the psychiatric hospitals. And if we can find a way of cost-effectively taking the aluminium out of the water, we may have a solution for all those parts of South Africa where aluminium is a threat to not just our mental health, but our health in general. And that all started because we're studying aquaculture at Rhodes University in Grahamstown. Aquaculture, it doesn't mean to say there isn't a close relationship. And we've taught many hundreds of students um, the art and the and science of aquaculture in this building and on the experimental fish farm and all our aquaculture facilities of which experimental fish farm as a part. I never thought I'd be setting up a fish farm, designing it, setting it up, f getting it funded, building my own office, um, getting funds to build this hatchery, this building and most of the facilities around us. Um, I never thought I'd be lucky enough to have that opportunity, but that's what Grahamstown in South Africa did for me as, as, a, as an alien, as I was called then. And the, I'm a still a little bit. <laughs> it doesn't matter. In Grandstown, you've got to be here at least 20 years before you're fully accepted. And I've been here 37 years, and I'm getting there, but I'm not there yet. I'm not a local yet.